online shopping rules all tall women should learn. Online shopping has its benefits, but it also has its downfalls especially for tall women. We know the struggle is so real when it comes to shopping online and designers not necessarily giving enough details for us to make the proper purchasing decision. I wanted to share some of my personal online shopping rules that I live by in the past and today. For me, shopping online is a key essential to have an stylish wardrobe, especially when most brands don't cater to us. In order for me to have really nice pieces in my wardrobe, pieces that stand out, I have to shop online, which I absolutely love because the deals are real online, but it is sometimes a little hassle when I have to do a little bit more footwork than the average girl. The goal is to always make sure that you are making good purchases and that you are confident in what you are buying. So let's get into the rules that I swear by shopping online as a tall girl. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna always know your measurements. It starts here when it comes to shopping online, especially as someone who is tall. Pretty much impossible to shop online if you don't know your measurements, especially as tall women. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna always have a measuring tape that is flexible. If you don't have a flexible measuring tape, I will link something in the description bar for you to grab. They usually come inside of like a sewing kit or something. So that'll be a good way to grab you a sewing kit, which is an essential, and get you a measuring tape. You wanna measure your shoulder to shoulder. Then you wanna also measure your bust area. So when you're bringing that measuring tape around, you want it to hit the largest part of the bust area. Next place you wanna measure is your waist. You wanna make sure you're taking that measuring tape around the smallest part of your waist so that you're getting an accurate number. From there, you wanna also measure your hips. Now, we all don't have big hips, but we do still have a largest part of our hips. So you wanna take the measuring tape and bring it to the largest part of your hip area and bring that tape around. The place you wanna measure is the rise of your pants. For the ladies who like to wear jeans and trousers, take the measuring tape and you wanna bring it slightly above your navel area and bring it down to the crotch area on the pant a really good way to get a good estimate of what your numbers are. Write these numbers down, keep them in a safe place in your wallet. If you do not want to do that, you can always use option two and go to a tailor and have them measure your body. It's free. Okay, well, it's free over here. <laughs> if you can't find a place to do it, definitely look for a good tailor in your neighborhood and have them do your measurements. Think about using them as your go-to tailor. If you guys don't know, I am six feet tall and I always get my things tailored to fit my body. Not every single thing, but a lot of the things that I do buy, I have to go get them tailored. I can't just go ahead and wear them. Either it's the waist or it could be the sleeves. I want the sleeves cropped or maybe I want her to take something in on my pants let out something on the bottom or whatever it is. That's a really good way for you to start to build a rapport with them so that when you do have something that you want to take to them, they really know what your style is and what you're trying to achieve. Otherwise, you're probably going to be lost and spend a ton of money on trying to find the best tailor. When you're shopping online, you also want to check the size guide. Now, the size guides are, I'm going to say that they're standard. If you Google size guides, you're gonna see a ton of size guides out there. When you're actually going to these websites and you're scrolling through and you're looking through the size guide, they may be a little bit different for some websites. When you are checking these size guides, you wanna check multiple sites. That way you can get a really good idea of what you are seeing. So now knowing your measurements and checking multiple sites and their size guides, it'll give you a really good range of what you should actually order. So whether that's a small, medium, large, or a 10, 12, or 14. It's a really good way to gauge things in the size before you actually make your purchase. The second thing you wanna do is you wanna read the product details. I mentioned this slightly in the beginning, but the product details has a ton of things that we, as women, need to see. You have the model's height. Most of them have the model's height, but reading those details are essential when making your decision. I personally always look for that model's height. If she is 5'10 and there's a pair of pants that she has on and I can see that she has on a pair of heels and they're pretty high, 
I already know that those pants are probably going to fit me. But the inseam is usually in the details. If they don't, they're going to have the model's height. And if they don't have that, I'm probably not going to buy it. I'm going to go into a store and actually find that brand or that item and try it on in store to avoid ordering and returning items because that's a total hassle in itself. The other thing you can see in the details is the fabric composition. Shopping online is not the easiest thing, especially if you're trying to shop at a designer that you haven't shopped at before. Good rule of thumb is if you're trying to buy a sweater of something in like a knitwear and if they have multiple colors you want to click on multiple colors and zoom in. I'll tell you I have purchased things and I'm just like this is a really really great product. Reading the details. Good. When I got it home <laughs> it was something different so I had to return it. So I like to read what the fabric is, the model's height, it also has the care instructions for an item, if you need to dry clean it, if you should wash it in cold. Those are essential to knowing how to care for your clothes and having your clothes for a really long time. Us fashion girls, we love, and I'm going to say fashion girls because all women love fashion, I think. Uh, I'm just going to say fashion girls. Like I like to take care of my clothes. It's a one and done type of thing for me. I want things that's going to last in my wardrobe. So I really recommend if you are trying to build a wardrobe full of things that you absolutely love definitely go for investment pieces and buying things of great quality a lot of the girls i see online they are they're definitely gearing towards that now and it's, i'm so happy to see it because back in the day i would see a lot of girls buying like cheaper things you will be surprised at how much money you are spending and wasting at the end of the year so the goal for me is to have good quality pieces in here that'll last me for a long time. It doesn't mean that I won't buy something that has a little mix of polyester in here, but I would prefer something of better quality and natural fabric. So when it comes to natural fabrics, I would say lean towards those when you are selecting items. A lot of designers, and I'm gonna say it and nobody else is gonna say it, I noticed that even some of the higher end designers are making clothes and they have a, they're mixed with a lot of polyester. Like why? because people are going to buy it. So make sure you're reading those labels and those details and make the best decision for your wardrobe and your pockets. When it comes to the inseam, it's like one of the first things that we should look at as tall women. Alice and Olivia, they go up to a 34 inch inseam, but sometimes you'll catch 34 and a half and even a 36. So when I say those details are important in trying brands outside of a typical <laughs> tall girl brand, well, for me, they are a brand that I would always venture to because of the inseam at minimum is a 34 and I can wear that. If you are six feet, maybe, maybe six one, definitely give Alice and Olivia a chance. I'm gonna also read the reviews guys. So again, if you're checking TikTok and you're checking like all these social media outlets and blogs, read the reviews. Sometimes they are paid reviews, but you do have to pay attention to what you're reading. You would be surprised at how detailed some of the girlies are that actually leave reviews. I personally love to leave detailed reviews and put my height in there because I know that there's another tall girl somewhere that is praying <laughs> that someone puts their height inside of the description or that review so that they'll know if they should buy the item. Now I found some reviews for a pair of pants that I purchased from Favorite Daughter. I've never seen tall women in them. I purchased them a few months ago, literally on TikTok. Everybody's asking me. Now when I go and check the reviews, I'm seeing girls who are 6'1", who have purchased the pants. So I love it. I love to see the women trying new things as opposed to just sticking to the tall girl brands that really don't have a ton of stylish things. So kudos to the ladies who are definitely trying something new. So the third thing I love to do is I like to shop the brands that I currently shop at now. It's the easiest way for me not to get frustrated and to have a really good shopping experience. Now, when it comes to shopping brands that I already know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not gonna make a product that's not gonna fit me. But I know it's a safe choice. For so if you shop at a particular brand often, you wanna go there first. You wanna stay in the know as to what's coming in new. You wanna know if they're doing any collabs with any designers. You wanna be that first girl to grab those things. Why? Because the average high girls take all of the clothes ladies <laughs> and we're not even mad at them but we just have to jump on it 
a lot earlier than they do because of the type of struggles that we have when it comes to shopping. So, when it comes to new brands, I would not recommend just buying them online. If you can find the item in a store, definitely go ahead and try the items on. This way, again, you're not ordering things and having to send it back because that hassle is like the worst. And sometimes it takes forever to get your money back. So if you do want to try a new brand as a tall woman, do your research. If they do have the designer in a department store, definitely go and have a shopping day of fun of try on and that way you'll know if it's worth venturing into or if it's not if you stay this far in the video make sure you are hitting that like button and let's continue mindless browsing will always be the downfall for some of us ladies when we're browsing in store it's literally like shopping window shopping right but online but it's at your fingertips to the point where you can literally just put your card number in and purchase. What I like to do is instead of just sh mindlessly browsing online, I like to use my wish list. I've talked about wish lists before as tall women. It's just something that we should do. And I'm gonna keep saying it because they do not cater to us. So if we really want a piece, we wanna create like a wish list, have it on this wish list, and then we're shopping from our wish list. When we are creating our wish list, these are pieces that are going to add a value to our closets and our wardrobes as opposed to just a piece in the, a piece in the closet that we're not going to wear. Adding value is what makes our wardrobe stylish and makes them last for a long time. And you guys already know I am big on cost per wear. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to be intentional when you are shopping. It's just a really good way to shop and to put things again in your wardrobe that are adding value. Being intentional, creating wish lists, knowing what you're going to buy is by far the best thing you could absolutely. Now I'll say this, a lot of the trends that come out, it's not really intentional shopping, it's just like more of an impulse shopping because a trends come and go and you don't necessarily get to wear those same items for the next season. Being intentional when you're shopping is really the key to building a wardrobe that is pretty much full of the things that you absolutely love. Now when it comes to trends and things it's a little bit different because it's not that you're not intentional. <laughs> you're buying fast fashion, things on trend and you're likely not to wear it the following season. So for me and what I like to do is be intentional with the things that I'm buying. And if I'm buying something that is on trend, I'm very careful what I'm choosing because if it's too loud, it's not going to fit with my wardrobe aesthetics. You guys have seen those lime green Jimmy Choo shoes. They're very pretty. However, <laughs> child, I can't wear them with a ton of stuff, but they're so pretty. And for me, as a person with a larger foot, I try to get things that are different. Um, but let me tell you something, I'm going to have them for a long time, I don't care. <laughs> Even though I haven't worn them a ton this summer and spring, I'm going to definitely wear them next year. Even though they are a bright color, it'll be something that I can wear to like a nice summer event or a nice spring event. As you know, I love to use the app Karma. Now Karma, okay, Karma, <laughs> the reason why I like Karma is because you can add all of the stores that your item is at good rule of thumb I like to follow is adding like maybe three to five stores where a particular shirt is being sold at once that item goes on sale at whatever store it is karma is gonna notify me and Coco is going to actually go ahead <laughs> and purchase that item the sales may vary from each site because they do have sales at different times but it's just a really good way to get something that I really wanted that's on my wish list on sale as a, as opposed to just going ahead and just sale shopping. And the last thing is follow a color palette. Now it sounds a bit boring, but it's really not. If you actually look into your wardrobe, you guys can do this. Look into your wardrobe and see the pattern. See the pattern of colors and styles and fabrics that you currently buy. So I'm sure if you look into your wardrobes now, ladies, you guys already have some sort of color palette and you just don't realize it. Here's my rule of thumb and here is what I actually like to teach my clients and stuff. You wanna pick about three to four neutral colors in your wardrobe. So that could be black, white, anything that's a neutral, cream, ivory, tan, beige, grays, blue. Any neutral color, you wanna have three to four of them in your wardrobe. 
The other rule of thumb is pick five to seven base colors and your base colors can consist of anything that you always gear towards. So for example, if you like to buy things that are in like the olive green color, you're more likely to get an olive green and something that goes with an olive green, probably like a sage, possibly like a mustard color, some sort of yellow, even orange. And they kind of all flow together, right? So now when you have these down on paper and you're looking at them, you're like, ah, this is how I shop. Kind of like your brain triggers something, kind of lean towards these colors all the time and things that actually go with each other. So you want to have three to four neutral colors, five to seven base colors, and then you also want to have an accent color. Something that you don't typically buy, but it also still goes with the majority of your color palette. I tell you, a color palette will save your life. Here's why. You're not going to go into a store and go to the neon colors because your wardrobe has like mustards and greens and reds in it. You're, you're never going to go towards that. Like your eye is just not even going to be trained to look there. A palette is something that sounds like it's a bit much, but I definitely think it's a really, really good idea to shop with one because it'll help with building out a nice wardrobe as opposed to kind of like doing what everybody else is doing because it's really hard when we have a ton of fashion girlies all over the place. Most of them are like 5'4 to like 5'7 <laughs> and here we want to mimic or try these styles and we can't. So we want to do things a little bit different as opposed to what everybody else is doing and that is really the goal for me and not being frustrated when trying to find things and the designer does not cater to us. Those are the rules that I swear by when it comes to shopping online ladies. I hope you guys enjoy that. I am going to be linking a few of the items that I mentioned in the video below for you ladies which will be the measuring tape so you guys can take your measurements. I'm also going to link a couple of my digital downloads, especially the one for <laughs> creating a capsule wardrobe and learning how to shop high low the right way. Also going to link my blog post, how to shop high street brands the right way for you guys to check out as well. Thank you guys for tuning in today. If you stay to the end of this video, please comment Coco We See. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Coco Styles NYC and Coco Styles NY and my personal style blog, CocoStylesNYC.com and my style services, CocoStylesNY.com and I'm on Tickety Tickety Talk, Coco Styles NYC and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.